So I'm in the process of making a thing. Uh, this is the, not the wrist breaker 5 million, but it's, it kind of functions that way right now. So this is going to be a tool torque tester. I need to get bearings for it. Um, so it's going to spin. Well, the drill will spin it up to speed and I'll see how long it, it takes to accelerate it up. Um, it's the wrist breaker now because the, the drills all have locking chucks. So when you stop, it just locks up and spins around. So I need to make a, or adapt a mechanism to ratchet uh, on there. I'm just showing this now because it's all hooked up, but you can also um, use it to <laughs> drive yourself along. Uh, it's a little bit quick for that. Uh, so let me take it apart and show you what I've got. So this whole project has been an example of keeping crap you don't need and actually eventually finding use for it. These lug bolts are from my Mini Cooper, which I sold many years ago, or several years ago. Um, I got new um, wheels and they gave me new shiny lug nuts, so I have the old ones. Um, the tire is from my brother's Saab. I'm sitting in one of the sheds. Ain't too good to throw away, but anyways. But completely useless at the same time. The, the rubber's all shot and the rim is actually bent. So, um, but that's my flywheel. And I mentioned I have the the stopping issue. Um, tries to kill you when you stop the drill. So I have this. What is this? Well, it's a bent, broken ratchet. So I'm going to hook up the ratchet to drive the wheel. So it's driven through the ratchet, so when the wheel stops, it'll, um, it'll coast and ratchet and won't kill you. So the broken Taiwan ratchet, which my grandfather-in-law saved for, I don't know how many years he had this thing broken. And then he passed away, I bought all his tools. I moved this broken ratchet all the way, you know, a state over and stored it for like three years and now I found a use for it. So was it worth it? Uh, maybe, maybe not. But that is going to be the ratcheting mechanism. So I have this drive plate. Um, I worked on this with um, Binary Dinosaur uh, today. Got the four holes drilled and the center hole, hole bolt. A board. This is just a press fit onto the shaft now. Um, so the idea is there's going to be another bearing on this side, going to be two bearings and two upright posts, and then um, you'll spin the wheel with a drill, and you'll measure how fast the wheel accelerates using an encoder um, attached to this end, and by telling how fast the wheel accelerates, you can tell how much torque a drill is putting out, um, either cordless or regular drill. So um, this is fresh, has not been deburred yet, so it's kind of deadly. Um, so yeah, we laid out all the holes, put put Dykem on, laid it all out, drilled the holes, got it right the the first time. So um, that was the, the f I think that was yeah, it was probably his first machining project we worked on. Well, the first one was turning down this end. Um, I've been doing programming, um, tutoring with, with him mostly, but then we started doing the programming for this and it led into the machining. So, yeah, so we were programming the encoder um, to get this to work, and then I asked if he wanted to help make the actual metal part. So, um, got this. Yeah, so we tapped the, we drilled the holes, tapped them, got this shaft press fit onto there. Um, didn't get any footage of that. It's slow enough doing sort of the tutoring stuff without trying to tutor and do uh, a video at the same time. You never get anything done. Um, but anyways, the plan now is I'm going to turn, or not turn, um, machine a hex in on this side so, um, so I can put a socket on it and then drive the socket with that 
ratchet attached to the drill. So it'll be a little bit cobbled together. Um, so this is my setup for milling the flats. I'm sure this is gonna chatter like crazy, but thankfully surface finish means basically nothing on this. I just want a hex on here. So this is 12 millimeter. Because I got the bearings, um, so about half an inch. So I'm going to try cutting 716s flat in there, and or 716s hex. So hopefully um, everything goes as planned. Like I said, I, I'm expecting chatter and complaining, but hopefully nothing like completely break so chattering and complaining coming up um, but hopefully two flats also or sorry six flats <laughs> Yeah, that's good. So I'd like it if it came to a little bit more of a point, but that's the size that the shaft is, and I don't really want to go down all the way down to 3 8. So um, I'm going to mill these a little further back, and then, um, yeah, then it'll be set for a socket. I'm going to make the frame for the tool torque tester, uh, at least partially this piece of wonderfulness. Um, I don't even know what it was, uh, but it's no longer going to be whatever it was and it's not going to be the tool torque tester. Mostly this piece here. I think the base is too screwed up for me to even want to bother with. is cut. Um, it's going to look something like this. My feet. This guy is going to go on top. These two are going to be my uprights. Like so. And then the wheel will go there. We'll have extra little plates on top to hold the bearings to sit because they won't quite line up on here okay. So that's the plan. Um, let me get this welded up. We used to have this thing hung up near where we did a lot of the grinding and welding. Um, they tend to grind and weld in a similar place, but really it should not stay anywhere near where you're going to be grinding. At least not, I just want it to be all fuzzy and just miserable to use. So.
I'm making these little tabs for the bearings to mount onto. Now, my first plan was to weld them on, but then I realized that the tire won't fit through this space, so I'm gonna have to bolt them on. On this one I staggered the holes, and the next one I'm going to go vertically. I don't think it really matters strength-wise, but there, these will be a left and a right because obviously I'm not measuring close enough um, to make these interchangeable. So um, I want to know which side they go on. So if I do one slanted and one straight up and down, um, I'll be able to tell. idea. I think I'm going to try to press the shaft through the um, through the plate a little bit more to see if I can get the wheel a little better centered on there. Um, but that's the idea. Uh, I have less clearance between the wheel and my uprights than I had hoped for. Um, basically I've measured, I messed up on my measurements. I measured this width of the tire. It's like, oh, it's about Eight inches, I'll make it 10, I have plenty of room. So I cut the bottom piece here to 10 inches. Um, <laughs> which means that since these are an inch wide, um, I've got basically no clearance. But as you can see, it runs true enough that it doesn't matter. So I guesstimated that it needs to go about half an inch more. So I've got a mark on the shaft so I can see when I get to half an inch. Thankfully we haven't used the press since I pressed this in the last time, so we're fine. But actually, no. Oh, it'll be alright. The end of that shaft got a little mushroomed over the last time I pressed it in. So now the plan is I'm going to mill off these round part, these um, not round parts, these square parts of the ratchet head so it makes it more round. And then I'll probably mill off a little bit of this tab too, um, well depending on how well it mills. So we'll see if Chinesium carbide can cut um, Taiwanium um, ratchet. So this is probably pretty hard but I suspect it's not ridiculous. I suspect we'll be able to cut it with carbide. So I had this flatter and I touched off on the round surface so now I'm going to be able to take a cut across here and um, it'll be the same height as that round and I can keep taking smaller and smaller or small cuts around until I have approximated a circle. I'll lower the speed down on the Yeah, so there we have it. I'm not sure if we got that on camera, machining it, but I just cut a slot in there. Um, I'm gonna make a plug to go in this end that will chuck up to the drill, and then the ratchet will act as the overrunning clutch, and I won't break my wrist. So. Look. Did he walk the whole way? Oh yeah, yeah, he walked the whole way. It's pretty fast. Wanna see the thingy I made? Yeah. So, 
before it would try to break your wrist. Uh -huh. But now I've got a clutch on there so you, it won't. Um, so it only goes one direction. So you start off in, in speed one. And then you can switch to high gear. Of course, the batteries don't like it. Well, it works. Yeah. It's a little rough on batteries. Hey. Hey. Ah, ah. You did pretty good, though. Good. I said, I mean, Daddy May. <laughs> it looks a little concerned. It really works. Only really works well in the low torque setting, mm -hmm. but that's the okay. high torque, low speed. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the high torque, low speed. Uh, if I if I switch to just the rim, I could probably do high torque. I mean, high speed, low right. torque. Right. If you, if you didn't have a tire on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. That high? That's low. It's pretty fast. How many RPM is low? 400. But then I can switch to high speed. Yeah, once you get overcome the initial yeah. inertia. And it still cuts out, but... Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but it probably won't... Because um, if I'm going to be testing, like, Comparing this to say another half inch drill, the low speed is going to be more useful really for things you really care about torque with. Right. Because like a little 3 8 drill, you won't be able to test with this. But it takes, seems like it takes enough torque to get it going that, that it'll actually be a, a be, struggle. If you struggle. And you want it to be a struggle because you want it to see if one struggles a lot and one struggles not so much. Yeah. If they both did it with no trouble, you couldn't have see the difference. Yeah. yeah. And I think the 400 RPM on this drill is closer to like what your, say, right angle Makita runs yeah, at. Yeah, that's like 3, 350 or something. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is straight out, but yeah. Yeah, so in that, it seemed like it'd be closer to that range than, than 1500, which is what that runs at high speed. Yeah. So, there it is. So tomorrow with Cyrus, you're gonna sort of do the calibration and get the um, motor working. Maybe Thursday. Every Thursday. Yeah. I hope you liked this video. If you did, I'd hope you'd consider subscribing. I've got a virtually endless supply of projects I could make videos about. If there's something I can do better, or if there's a type of video you'd like to see more of, leave a comment down below.